Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. We're gonna tackle a different kind of topic today, but one of the biggest questions in most people's minds is how do we cut our budget? How do we really live within the means that we're making? And honestly, a really huge one is cutting some bills you don't have to have. The biggest one, you may not like this, it's your cable. Uh, paying upwards of 40 to 50 or way more for cable or satellite TV is not a necessity. It does not clothe you, feed you, or house you. It just entertains you. But you can save a lot of money and still be incredibly entertained by cutting the cable and switching to some streaming devices or even just online streaming right there in your own home. So obviously here we still have an expense to switch from regular cable to streaming devices. I still need internet. Uh, Honestly, yes, I run an internet business. I can't imagine life without internet in my house. So most of us already have it. We're still cutting the cable, but we gotta keep the internet. And your first deciding factor as to whether or not you can do this is the speed of your internet. If you're on dial-up, this is not for you. Uh, and hopefully you're not on dial-up anymore. Most of these streaming devices recommend five megabits per second. And you can go to your cable internet provider and see what your service is. But I will tell you personally, we don't have five megabits where we are. We have 1.5. We're out in the boonies with really slow internet. Can we still run them? Yes. They just have to buffer a little bit longer, which means downloading and processing the video. So there may be times when I'm watching a show that it's gonna pause. That's okay. I, don't, I can't get any faster where I live. So you can run on a lower internet. They just recommend five megabits per second. And most of you are gonna get that. If you live in a city, if you have you know, broadband internet, um, DSL, you're already hitting those numbers just fine. Um, so our first step is to decide where to go next. Uh, if you're concerned about losing your normal broadcast TV, don't be concerned. So much of what you watch on regular TV is actually available on streaming devices. And these are three, two Rokus and an Apple TV. We've also got Chrome and Amazon has joined the mix in the last year. So figuring out which system to get can be a whole nother problem for you. But they're all gonna offer you hundreds upon hundreds of different channels, different content, movies, video, uh, YouTube, songs, we've got a lot of options here. You're not gonna be bored at all. Uh, so let's cover what they offer and which one is probably gonna be the best for you. So we've got a lot of choices just here. This is literally everything in our house. Uh, and some of it is really old and some of it is a little newer. We do not have an Amazon Fire TV, which came out last year, or a Chromecast stick. But honestly, they all do about the same thing. What you're gonna need to decide is what programming you want and what functionalities you want. Uh, in terms of what critics say is the best, Roku wins. Roku's actually kind of been around the longest. Uh, and the nicest part about them, if you read a whole bunch of reviews, is that they really have no skin in the game as to what you watch. They just are a streaming device company versus Apple, who would love for you to stay on iTunes and watch a lot of their content, Amazon, who would love for you to stay on Amazon Prime, Google, who would love to show you Google Play content. Um, so a lot of folks love Roku and the fact that they, they aren't pushing content on you. You can come in very easily, find the app, or the content that you wanna watch. Roku also allows you to search across all content. This is huge for me because my children wanna watch a show, but I can't remember. I don't know who has Clifford right now on streaming. Is it Amazon? Is it Netflix? Um, I can go through the Roku search and quickly find who has it versus having to go through each and every single provider. Um, so we have to pick the device that you want. You have ones that are set top boxes, you have sticks, you're not even gonna see this guy. These are very similar, there's not a huge difference between them, um, but folks will say that this one's faster. So if you can't decide, that may point you this way. This one, a lot cheaper. So if you're just wanting to try this out, maybe you go with a stick. Um, and there are also some deals out. So I don't have Amazon Fire TV, but there's actually a deal on Amazon Fire TV right now that when you buy their set-top box, and you get three months worth of Sling TV, which we'll talk about in a second, you get $50 off of your box. That makes it half price. 
If you don't want the box and you want the Amazon stick, which they also offer, you get a free stick when you get three months worth of Sling TV. Now, I keep talking about Netflix and Sling TV. There are still content providers here that we're still having to pay for. So yes, we cut that $50 a month cable bill. We're gonna switch and we're gonna pay $9 to Netflix or you're going to have Amazon Prime, which is gonna give you all of the Amazon content. It's also gonna give you free shipping for a year. Uh, that's the most expensive of all of them. Sling TV is the newest and kind of the most fun in our house. It's $20 a month, but Sling gives you ESPN, ESPN2, Home and Garden, Food TV, all of these channels that you're thinking, if I give up my cable, I, I don't know that I can survive. You can, I promise. But Sling TV is offering them to you 20 bucks a month and there are no taxes. So we've kind of worked around some of the most expensive parts of your cable TV bill. Um, all of these are gonna run on that and using the Sling TV and the Amazon deal together, you might get a really great deal on a set top box or a stick and have all the programming that you feel like you're gonna miss. Um, but there is still a cost, so I don't want you to think it's gonna be free forever. This is a one-time expense. The Roku is around 99, the Amazon Fire TV is around 99, sticks are more 35 to $39, one-time cost. So our monthly cost is really becoming that Netflix subscription, uh, the Sling TV subscription or Hulu, whatever you decide. In our family, we have Amazon Prime, we have Netflix, uh, and we've been trying out Sling TV. I don't know that we watch a ton of it. Um, maybe during football season, that may change for us, we'll see. But that's the joy here, is that you can pick things up and cancel them as you wish. Now, besides having to pay for content, there is actually a lot of free content as well. So if you're really looking at this as a huge cost savings measure, we're not gonna pay for Netflix, we're not gonna pay for Hulu, you'll actually be able to stream through your Roku, through your just sticks, whatever you grab, your normal broadcasting content. ABC, NBC, CBS, most of those, as soon as it plays on air, it is normal time slot, they put it on their website. Well, you're gonna be able to access that and watch your normal shows. So if you're a big NCIS fan, I may not watch it at the exact hour that it aired for everyone else, but I can actually watch it an hour later. Uh, up to sometimes four or five episodes are stored on the main company's website so we can even get a couple days behind, but we're still watching our show without having to wait a really long time or pay any money. Uh, also, you can go even to the other extreme of providers. So if you are a crazy baseball fan and you wanna watch the Pirates play every single game, but you don't live anywhere near Pittsburgh, uh, we can pay for MLB TV. These are all working through these devices. They have so many apps that work with them, even the Weather Channel. But I can pay, I can watch every baseball game that is out there if that's what you needed to do. Um, but at the same time, I'm not paying for cable. Um, so it, it depends on where you are with what you are consuming entertainment wise. In our household, we're nine bucks for Netflix and we do pay for a year of Amazon Prime. One personal tip on Amazon Prime, just to help you out, don't forget that you can share that with other family members. I cannot share the streaming part of Amazon Prime with another family member, but I can share the free shipping. So maybe you share this with someone who doesn't wanna stream, that's gonna help cut your $99 a year cost on Amazon Prime. Uh, and one other inside savings tip for Amazon Prime, if AT&T is your internet service provider, you can renegotiate for a better rate, and currently AT&T is offering, if you choose their middle level broadband service, free Amazon Prime for a year. So go ahead and take the year contract, upgrade your plan if that's what you can do, and get a free year of Amazon Prime, and now you're able to stream with a higher and faster internet rate. So in the end, I know this is a lot of new information for some of you or possibly old information. The point of the whole thing really is to get you to just think outside the box, to realize that we don't have to live in cable TV land or even satellite TV land anymore with contracts that we're stuck in with monthly bills and taxes and everything added on. You really can save a ton of money by switching to something that you're controlling. You're controlling what you wanna watch and when you wanna watch it, um, all with a little stick. The big things that you need to decide, do I have fast enough internet and what system do I wanna use? And again, the biggest one that most people recommend is the Roku 3. This is actually an older system, um, but they're all gonna work. They're all gonna let you watch what you wanna watch. 
You just have to make those decisions. Mm -hmm.